All right, so if we have a clear idea of what our data model is, then we want to see how do we interact with the actual database itself? Sort of what is the programming interface that Android gives us? Uh, and uh, we're going to look at, at a bunch of that. Um, I'll walk you through some of this code and then some of the code you, know, you can sort of take a look at on your own. So um, in terms of the project, you know, under the, the database uh, directory, we have a database helper. And this database helper inherits from SQLite Open Helper. And we have to give it sort of the database name and the database version. And this provides uh, some wrapper functions uh, around the actual database. So uh, on create, if you remember, we have these create table um, sort of uh, queries. It's not a query, the commands, SQL commands that we made up um, that are stored here. <clears throat> this is the create table command. This creates a, a table. This creates our, our notes table. And this creates our image table. This creates our image table. All right. And so when we are initially creating our database, we need to create these, these two tables. Okay. And if we ever upgrade the database, we need to delete the old tables. And the way you delete a table in SQL is you, you say drop, so drop table. If it exists, and then and then we create uh, we create uh, our new tables. So you know sometimes, actually very frequently, um, your database is not necessarily a, a, a static thing. So your database has a schema, which means it's got a set of tables and it's got a set of columns. And you start out with sort of one organization, and then you're working with it for a while, and you think, hmm, you know, I should put this column over here, and I should add this column to, to this table, and that becomes the next version of your database. And it's, it's like a program. Your program has data structures, and, you know, you do your data structures one way, and then you add a field to this object, and, you know, this is sort of how, how life proceeds. You want to add this feature, and then you need this, this piece of data for it. And the same thing happens in, in your database. It's not like you know just come up with a database schema once and then we're done. You know, it's it's constantly sort of evolving. And so the, there's support in here for upgrading from one version of your database to another. I'm going to skip down to the to the very bottom here, uh, just because there's a, a couple of uh, constants. You know, what version are we on? And what's the the name of the database? This is where the the, the database name that we saw uh, earlier came in. Um, and one thing that has to happen uh, when you open up your database is we have to make sure that foreign keys are enabled. I, I, I cannot understand why SQLite uh, does not enable them by default, but for some weird reason they don't. And so um, you almost always want foreign keys. And so uh, Pragma is sort of a little bit of an escape hatch. It's like it's, 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 it's for commands that are not standard SQL. Um, so this is just a SQLite thing. We just have to say, hey, let's let's, let's make sure we have foreign keys. The thing is, if if this if you don't do this, bad things happen. Uh, but it, this is sort of an unfortunate reality, a detail sort of thing. Okay. So now I want to I want to uh, start off by looking at uh, at the delete case, which is a little bit funny because if you're like, well, if I don't have any notes in there to begin with, how do I delete something? But delete is just easier to follow the code, and so it it gets us warmed up. So um, this, this is our database code to delete a note. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get a reference to the database. And perhaps not surprisingly, you can get a readable or a writable reference. And when we're doing a delete, we absolutely need a writable reference. But if we were doing a query, we would get a readable reference. And uh, it's nice to, to um, get this out up front, both because for the database system, it's really good for it to know like, hey, I'm not going to do any writes. It can optimize that case. And even as a programmer, when I look at this code, when I see writable database, I think, oh, database might be modified. I need to sort of be aware of that in this code. So I get my, my writable database. Um, um, I, I get an image uh, record. Um, we'll look at that in, in a little bit. That gives me back a list. So this is uh, a way of getting the image list from the database. That's, there's some magic in there. There's going to be a query. And then once I get back this image list, I go through the, this image list. And remember, I'm deleting this note. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go delete each one of these files. So let's take a look at delete file because that's fairly straightforward. I suppose this stuff. 
So a delete file takes uh, an, an image object. In every image object is an image path. We create a file object, which is an Android uh, thing. Actually, it's a uh, Java thing. And then we just say, hey, uh, oh, if f exists, if it, if it doesn't exist, we should, we should uh, print an error. So if it exists, we are trying to delete it. And if the delete fails, we print a log message. And if it succeeds, we also print a log message. And this um, uh, gives me a chance to emphasize if there is one pedagogical thing that I would like to get through to you as a programmer is that er checking your error codes is not an optional thing. Your life will be made much better as a programmer if you adopt the following religion. That religion is always check your error codes. Um, you know, it's a very simple religion. There's not a lot of texts. It's not a lot of beliefs, but I, you know, I, uh, it, as part of my advanced operating systems class, I actually, uh, I remember I, I had to write like a, like a 10 line program, uh, to do this, um, like file and mapping things. It was, it was this operating systems thing. It was this 10 line program and it wasn't working. And I spent like two hours on it one night. And at the end of the day, this 10 line program, the first thing that, that, that happened was I opened up a file and I didn't check the return code of the open. Cause I was like, I know this file exists. Like I, I made it, it's there. It turns out I was like running it in the wrong directory or something, or I didn't have permissions. I can't remember what it was. That open was failing. And then everything else just went crazy after that. And it, it's just another example of your life will be much better as a programmer. You don't always have to do anything particularly complicated, but please, especially when you're interacting with a system, a database is a complicated thing. A file system is a complicated thing. If you are interacting with it and you are doing something like a delete, just please print what happened because later on down the road, when your app is acting strange, you want to see what's going on. Oh, I thought that file was deleted. It turns out it wasn't deleted. Oh, now I can figure out sort of what's going on. So please always, always check your return codes. But this is the file to delete. This is the code to delete a file. It's in our database helper class, but there's actually, there's nothing sort of database specific here. This is really just file system manipulation. And I'm getting uh, uh, you know, a list of image files. I am deleting them. After I'm done deleting the files, um, I actually delete the uh, note. So here is an you know, example of our, our uh, equal question mark um, syntax. We saw this before. So what this is saying is, hey, I want to do a delete. I want to do a delete in the notes table. My where clause is I want to pick a particular column I date. And my sort of, you know, what do you plug into that where clause is an array of strings, an array of strings that consist of the ID of this note in string form. So this is a little, you know, little rigmarole, right? Like, What's really important is this ID. What's really important is this ID field, which is in a note. And we have to turn that into a string and we have to turn that into an array because that's how we interact with uh, SQLite in this way, in this sort of columns value. So um, we are where clause is split into two parts, the column ID that we have and, and, and then the actual value for that column ID. And let's take a look at uh, get image. Where do we do get image? Get image. Okay. So uh, we're going to return a mutable list. I reckon it could have been a could have been a regular list, but we changed it at some point, so it's convenient to have it be a mutable list. All right. So we're going to do a query because we want to get all the images. And a query returns a cursor, okay? And you know, just you know, as we saw before, sort of one of the first things you do with a cursor is you you, you go to the beginning of the cursor. We're gonna we're gonna generate a list from uh, from this from this database cursor. So a list of what? Um, 
Well, we want every image, so image table name. Uh, we're going to take all the columns, so our column selector is null. Then the oh, sorry, uh, yeah, we want all the the data fields. Um, however, what uh, what rows do we want? Well, we want the rows such that the note table ID, this is the foreign key, equal question mark, array of the ID string. So, sorry. So this, this ID, this, uh, maybe I should have said note ID, but this is the note ID. So we're, we're querying the images for all images that have a foreign key relating to this note. That's what we're saying, right? So give me all the images that um, are images for this note. And then blah blah blah. I mean, give 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 them to us in uh, ascending ascending order <clears throat> uh, relative to the path. This is where uh, naming the the path the path names with a um, a uh, timestamp is helpful because we're asking for uh, these things in um, um, alphanumeric sorted order. Uh, but because we name them with this consistent timestamp, we're also going to get them in timestamp order. So this is the query. Give me all the, the images uh, corresponding to this note. And then we are basically going to go through and we are going to build uh, image objects. So we're going to say, let's get the image path, which is, um, you know, and this is the sort of rigmarole. So I've got a cursor. Uh, I need to know what type I'm going for. Uh, I'm trying to get a string because that's what the image path is. Uh, the cursor, I get a column index because remember, I, I don't give it a column name, I give it a column index. And the column index is identified by the string constant column image path. So this is the sort of unfortunate part of working with a database. This is a whole lot of syntax to get the image path from, from this cursor, which is just you know one, um, one column in this row. And now I'm going to create this image um, object. I am going to create it with the ID that it has in the database and this image path. I'm going to put it in this list and I'm going to move to the next cursor. And once I'm done with all the cursors, I will, sorry, once I'm done um, with all of the images that this cursor returns, I will close the cursor and return this list. Okay. So, you know, the, you can think this through um, on your own time, but this is worth understanding sort of what's going on. Uh, you know, just incidentally, the same sort of thing happens uh, here where we're getting a note. You know, here we get a, a readable database uh, reference. We're doing a query uh, for a particular note ID. Right, and then here, you know, we don't care sort of what order, we don't care about any of this stuff. We just move to first. And then, uh, you know, we get the image list uh, for this note, and then we create a note saying, hey, let's get the ID, let's get the column text, let's get the timestamp, and uh, we've already gotten this list, and we close the cursor, close the database connection. So you, you can sort of see what's, what's going on here. Um, let's see, so those are, yeah, so that's getting, getting a note, um, inserting a note. We need a writable uh, form of the database. Uh, when we are inserting a note, we start with the text of that note and we start with the image list. So the ID and the timestamp are going to be inserted automatically by the database. So we don't have to worry about that. So we have a content values object, right? Because we don't want to, this, this uh, string is provided by the user. So we don't trust its contents. So we put into the values content object, the column, the name of the column text and, and, and what that text is. Then we want to insert into the database, this values, yeah, this values object for in, in the note table. And then we have to insert um, all of the um, images. So we go through the image list, 
We also do a content values. We assign the foreign key. This is our note ID and we're assigning it to our foreign key. This is the image path. We assign that to the image path. And then we do an insert into the, da into the database that we opened up for the, for, the, uh, for the image table. Right, so if you're inserting a note, you insert the note fields, then you go through the uh, image list, you insert all of those into the image table with the proper foreign key, and then you're done. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you can, you can sort of read this, you can, you know, you can look at this, did, did I do get note? Yeah, I mean, get note is sort of a, a fairly simple query, and we create the note object. Um, you know, here is uh, a query to get all of the images in the database. So we get a readable database. We are um, querying the image table. We're basically going to get everything. And we are going to uh, order the images by descending uh, timestamp. So the most recent first. Um, and this is going to correspond in our uh, note in our uh, notebook app. When the user adds uh, an image, it shows up in a list, and the list sort of grows with the most most recent at the end. And then there's going to be a view where you can see all the images, and there we want to see the most recent images first, just for the heck of it. So that's, that's what's being controlled here. Um, and then you know we're, we're doing the same thing. We're creating these uh, this this list of images from the cursor. And so, you know, there's an all notes, there's, there's a note count, which I don't even use. So most of this stuff, I think you can uh, look at on your own. Updating the image list, if you recall, um, I sort of showed you the algorithm and this is where the, the algorithm is implemented and I use a hash set and, you know, it's, um, you, can, you can always tell in my code if there are a lot of logging calls in the code, that means it was difficult for me to write because I had to do a lot of logging in order to make sure I was getting it right. Um, this is basically, you know, I'm going through and I'm sort of seeing like, oh, what's in the old set? What's in the new set? Oh, this isn't in the old set. I need to delete, you know, the, that file. And here I need to add that record. So, you know, those, the, the, the algorithm we talked about is implemented in code here. I'm not going to step through it all. You can you can take a look at it. And it's, it's actually, it's worth doing sort of once or twice just to, to sort of burn into your mind what it's actually like to interact with a, a SQLite database. Um, and yeah, I mean, everything else is sort of variations on a theme. How do we update a note? You know, we actually get the image. At this point, we're using some of the helper utilities that, that we've already written. We get the image using um, a, uh, a, a query. We have to have a content values object that we put the new text in and we update the note that way. Yeah, the new image list is, is updating the image list. That's the sort of complicated algorithm. So when we're updating a note, updating the text is quite straightforward. It's just, it's just these values. Uh, updating the image list is more complicated. As we talked about, you have to sort of figure out what was in the old image list, what's in the new image list, don't bother the elements that are the same in both. Add the new ones, delete the files for the old ones. Okay, so that is uh, interacting with it. Oh, sorry. Um, the, so this is all sort of Android code. I just want to show you this uh, quickly. There's gonna be some stuff in the view model that interacts with the database. And this is sort of the view models view of the database. Um, and this is actually pretty simple. Um, in fact, it's, it's all sort of exceedingly simple, um, but there, uh, when I go over the view model, you'll see why I split it out. Um, but this is, is basically uh, wrappers around some of these database objects, some of these database uh, routines, because this gives us a, a, an even more abstract way of, of interacting with the database, which is going to emphasize what's the same, whether the database is a SQLite database or a cloud database. So the, uh, this file is going to look very different for the cloud database, where there's going to be more stuff going on here. Uh, and then for the SQLite database, it's fairly straightforward. We're basically passing 
these uh, these um, uh, methods through to the to the SQLite database helper. The SQLite database helper is like it's very good. It's it's sort of what we would do. Um, the cloud database doesn't have a, a helper class, and so it, it makes more sense in that case. All right, thank you.